Hello, welcome back to the Idrisian Kingdom campaign. We are finally getting ready to take the fight to Carthage. We've led out with a little bit of kind of raiding. In my brain it's more like raiding, but it, I actually just sacked the settlement, that's all. But we've got the remainder of our forces coming across the Adriatic and into southern Italy. And soon we'll be able to push push the Carthaginians back out of Sicily. In the meantime, we are also getting a little bit more aggressive up north, because we have just gone to war with the Arverni. Now, the Arverni did just take Patavium. So in order to properly control this front, I need to actually rotate back around this way and capture Patavium. See if I can hold Genua, but I'm not actually terribly concerned about holding it. I'm going to rotate back, capture Patavium, and just work my way straight through here. Because then I can hold these two cities and not have to worry about any sort of flanking maneuver by the Arverni. Once I hold these two cities, I plan on just playing defense for several turns. Because I don't really want to expand into southern France just yet. I think I would rather clean Carthage out of Africa first. Because it would be easier to manage the fronts and hold some natural choke points. So, let me double check through here and make sure I've got my forces situationed properly. How many armies am I at right now? So I could get another three armies, several more fleets. These guys I don't think I need to worry about because even though my garrison is really lightly armored and somewhat small, I'm confident I can take that on. I doubt they will even attack me though. Over here, if I'm not mistaken, I saw a Parthian army hanging out around here. This is actually a pretty major concern because I am at war with these guys. I was a little bit worried that, because I believe this faction is like northwestern India. I'm not sure if this is quite all the way over to India, but I'm pretty sure that faction is right. Yeah, they're right here. Hmm. So this creates a bit of a problem for us because we just don't have a lot of armies down here. We don't have much population to recruit armies with either. So, I'm actually going to get a bit more aggressive and try and get peace with them. Also, give me a moment, I've got to play with my sound, my audio settings while I'm doing this, so the I don't know if there will be weird authentic. sounds because of it. But if you wish to go beyond the call, I accept. Ready for order! Okay, I don't know if that's messed up the audio or something, but at least now, on my end, I can hear properly now. Was I rotating over here to deal with these guys? If I remember correctly, I was because there was a war started and I didn't want to get involved with them, so I broke my military alliance with them. Is that right? Welcome, friend. Welcome. Come. Let's see, broken treaties, yes, so I ended my military alliance with them. They went to war with Pergamon, that's what happened. And I would much rather be on Pergamon's good side, because Pergamon is much stronger. I don't like stacking these armies next to each other, because it just minimizes the amount of territory I can defend. But now that we've got peace over here with... Samarajya Maurya. You can laugh at me about that pronunciation all you want, because I'm laughing on the inside too. Anyway, now that we've got peace with them, we don't necessarily need a lot of forces here to defend. 
I do still want Candy's Conquerors over here, though, so we'll just plop them here and put them in the fortified stance for now. Previously, I had not really gone into this province with expansion because this faction owned every city. And I just didn't want to go to war with them at the time. Now might be a good opportunity to do that, but until I have Carthage cleaned up, I really want to be defensive over here. I'm like always planning offensives, even though it's usually not a good idea for me to take them. I'm considering even running down here and taking this city off of Parthia just to see what happens, but I think I would rather... I think it is safer to just stay here in a walled settlement and hold that. And Parthian armies are the devil, so I don't want to have to manually resolve any of those battles. Alright, how are my fleets looking? Four turns of supplies and seven turns of supplies remaining. Um, let's go ahead and pick up some supplies for both of them this turn. That's not wise. I don't want to isolate either of them. Let's pick up some supplies, and then we'll switch them, pick up supplies, and then we might push down here, because I think I'm going to need the fleets to help hold against Carthaginian navies down in Sicily. Alright, and I think that's all I need to do with my military forces. Let's just double check that public order is in the positive. Cispolina, of course, it's going to be negative. Enormous amounts of banditry here. I'm not going to spend much more money up here for now until we get this more secure. I thought I was recruiting another army over here, but did I already rotate it across? I may have already brought it across. No, that's them. That's the army, okay. Over here... Anyway, we look good provincially. Our income is just fine. Loyalty is not good right now. Is that because our taxes are high? Yes, it is. Okay, so let's drop the taxes back down to standard. It's going to hurt our income, but we're still in the positive. And in the meantime, we will send this angry man to get married. And then his wife, we will boost up to level 4 to get that empire maintenance reduction. Now, where is the priority? Actually, public order is looking really good everywhere. I don't care too much about Mesopotamia right now. Uh, let's go to Cispolina just to get the public order boosted there, because as we're attacking up there, we're going to have a lot of public order problems, so the sooner we can get that into the positive, the better. And we will go ahead and end the turn there. Right? Did anyone level up that I didn't look at? Alright, I didn't check my agents either. I'll just make sure everyone's deployed real quick. Okay, we are good to go. Let's get back over to Sicily and end the turn. The sword was drawn, but now it's bloodied. Okay, I actually don't want this right now. Because first I want to secure my northern border. And I don't want to anger my allies anymore, because I'm already going to have some kind of major um, diplomatic penalties with them for expansion, so I don't want to make it worse. Okay. Let's see what we can do here.
So these are going to be essentially useless, but not entirely useless. I think I can only land two ships here at a time. So instead we'll just land over here. Actually, no, we'll let the skirmishers land out here. We'll have these guys land closer. Now, how do we defend this? It's a lot of javelins to take on. Okay, Velites are actually quite powerful. And they have a lot of them. We have zero cavalry. I think we can beat their infantry. It's mostly just their missiles I'm concerned about. Of course, I guess I also don't know if our... light spears can withstand a charge from their cavalry. Alright, well, normally I would kind of line up like this, but I think we have just enough troops that we can kind of kill box here. So we will use that formation. That should hopefully make some side shots available. And instead, uh, well, let's see here. Okay, what if we go like that? Put the bows here and here. And then can we... Do you think I can get away with hiding these guys? I kind of don't think I can. If we're lucky and their cavalry charges quickly, we can hopefully kill their general and their cavalry advantage instantly. Because I'm pretty confident these guys and spears will take on cavalry and win. Even against the heavy command, I think if we trap them in place, we can beat them. War dogs actually are a little bit scary to me now that I think about it, because I've used one of these units before in, I think, my Roman campaign, and they actually got tons of kills in the two battles I used them in. So with having light infantry, I do... I am a little concerned about that. I'll keep one unit... You know what, I'll even just keep it as the general. I'll keep the general back here so that we can fill any gaps. That, well, we better do two units so we can fill any gaps that start to appear in our spears. And then these other three I am going to try and hide. I think I'll run them over here and hope for the best. Alright, well, let's see how this goes. Yeah, we're going to need discipline. If our guys route easily, we are in huge trouble in this battle. Let's actually keep you back here just in case we can trap this cavalry. Okay, I don't want to trap the cavalry because their infantry is so close behind that it would prevent me from getting the flanks I want. I don't think I'll bother shooting the cav, because we should be able to stand up to their charge pretty well. Yeah, we're taking a little bit of casualties from it, but it's not the worst thing ever. Let's actually make sure our missiles are on guard mode, and then let's have these guys definitely shoot the general. Okay, you know what? Let's actually just go ahead and take them out. No, we need to save some ammo for... Okay, you guys... Haul ass, maybe these can be my flanking units. I'm not sure why that unit didn't move at all. Is this unit glitched? What's going on? Well, that's not good. Okay, we do need to give an attack order here. And here, just to make sure our guys are actually doing damage. Okay, 
Okay, the rest of you guys start coming around. Since they're all attacking in that area, let's rotate here. Okay, now things are starting to fix themselves. Let's try and trap the cavalry, scare off the skirmishers. I actually should have waited to scare off the skirmishers for a little bit, I think. Okay, you guys go ahead and return fire. General's getting shot, which is actually really, really bad. Let's put these guys up here because my front line here is not going to win. I need to get around their flank as quickly as possible. So I've gone the exact wrong direction here. You guys need to run as quick as you can. You guys come over here and get ready to reinforce. Go ahead and just give a charge order on their medium spears here. General is just going to have to do what he's going to do. All of the bows shoot their general. You guys get ready to reinforce the front line. You guys come around here and help deal with that. Okay, one of you. Go chase them. Just stop them from shooting. Front line is not holding up well, but we have reinforcements available. No, don't don't be like this. What the Okay, all of the archers hit their general. Okay, we actually got the charge on those guys, which is good news. Yeah, I'm just concerned our front line isn't going to last. Our spears are definitely doing what they need to against the cavalry. There goes the front line. Let's charge the general in. I don't really care what unit he attacks. What are you guys doing? Okay, you guys fall back a little bit. Reform. We'll just get everyone in there and hopefully our lines can hold. That's fine. It is expected that they will flee the battle. You guys actually keep rotating around. See if we can hit them from multiple flanks at the same time. Well, not at the same time, but we need to hit them from multiple sides. Okay, we have a couple of extra units available to fight. Their general is almost dead. We may just pull this one out. Um, let's hit their lighter infantry and just try and break them. Because if we can get the army losses, that would be great. These guys are going to lose out here. But we don't want to charge in with the reinforcements until we have to. You guys are going around the correct direction. Let's pull the general out, just to try and keep our morale high. Shit. Those guys are going to be a problem. Okay. Missiles. Okay, you two, go here. You three, go here, and stop being involved in the melee. We'll just let all of you be on fire at will. Get the charge there. We're taking a little bit of javelin fire, but not a ton. These guys are losing, which is bad. Let's charge in their reinforcements. Try and keep their morale up. Hit the back of this front line and hope for the best. We need to get the general out of there so we don't lose the morale. One of our units has used all its ammunition. Okay, these guys have used their ammo. You guys actually come out and around and help out with the flanks. I have another unit of spears available, so that's good news. You guys shoot into the back of the blob. You guys can't use flaming shot or else I most definitely would hit the back of the blob. 
Combat even, combat even, combat even. We've got decent numbers. We still have quite a few spears. I think we've got this. Okay, so we have two units of fairly healthy spears in reserve. Still have quite a bit of arrow fire available. We're starting to turn it around. Normally I don't put much stake in garrison defenses. Okay, archers, you need to make sure you're actually hitting enemies, not friendlies. Because I have so little armor, I can't really afford the friendly fire. Okay, you guys are not going to win against the front of that unit, so let's have you guys attack it in the flank. Once this breaks, we'll win, for sure. Of course, at this point, I'm pretty confident we have the victory anyway. Archers shoot this unit. You guys go ahead and get in. Alright. I never did rotate these guys around like I meant to. Alright, well, we won. Let's go ahead and turn off the archer fire, get the infantry as involved as possible. We want to make sure as few of these men retreat as possible. Okay, and actually everyone can go ahead and come off of guard mode so you can chase units appropriately. Ah, see, I turned on guard mode and made him stop. Whoops. Let's see. You know what? I think we've killed most of them. We can go ahead and end it there. So my archers actually didn't get as many kills as I was kind of expecting them to. But these Thracian warriors got way more kills than I was expecting. General didn't do hardly anything, that's kind of funny. We essentially wiped out the army. We'll just go ahead and ransom the captives for now. Thinking about it, I shouldn't have done that, but whatever. I should have executed them to boost my relation with my allies. We are a mighty people, well versed in the uses of wealth and power. And so we love gold. See, I like the idea of non-aggression with you just because it's a little added security, but I am not paying you money for it. Do not ask it lightly, Don't want but... that war. Oh yeah, that's not going to happen. That's fine. Construction, nothing too important happening there. I suspect these guys are just running. I don't actually know what their diplomatic standing is with anyone. They're at war with the Seleucids. Military allies with our buddies here. Alright, whatever. I'm not too concerned about these guys.
You think it'll be useful this time? Oh, actually, kind of. Okay, the Kidri Confederation just went to war with Pergamon, so that is an even bigger threat to us. I'll get out of the way. So I'm going to move the Fury out of Mesopotamia and down by Thapsikos. War with our defensive allies usually means war with us in the near future. Public order is basically managed at Edessa. Wow, We've got a lot of people trying to mess up this province for us. That's okay though. Am I at war with them? That looks like I'm at war with them. I totally am. Well, in that case, let's remove them. They're already injured. I was going to say they should retreat, but I don't think they can get far enough away. What do they even have? A mostly dead general, some light cav, I would imagine that's skirmish cavalry. These guys might be decent. I don't recognize basically any of these unit cards. But it looks like really, really light stuff. Eh, let's go ahead and fight it. Yeah, we'll wait for some better circumstances. Ugh. I hate this map. I like it because it's interesting. I hate it because it's interesting. Alright, let's see. Go with kind of our standard mixed front line. We'll go ahead and let the bows stay up front. Keep the swords on the flanks of the hoplites to protect them. Keep these guys available on the left flank, as is pretty standard for me. Yeah, most battles are going to look pretty much the exact same. Oh, you know what? If we had two of these guys... I didn't realize we had a noble unit and a regular unit. Let's put the regular guys down here and the nobles up here. Now that is going to provide a little bit of a problem for our hoplites, because of course we won't be able to walk up this cliff. We may not even be able to pass some of this territory. I can't quite tell. Well, anyway, let's just get it started. This battle's not too big of a deal. Okay, let's run up to here and see what happens. We'll send the skirmish cavalry out ahead. We'll actually send these two out ahead together, because I know I'm, I'm assuming that their cavalry is light and skirmish-focused. So I'd like to have some reinforcements available for my guys. Let's see, you guys can slow down. We'll keep the general going fast just to make sure the missiles have a little bit of cover up here. Bunch of camel riders, some light spears. That helmet looks kind of funky. Quit moving. Just, you know what, I can. I have a pause button. I want to look at these guys real quick. Where was that? Oh, there's a helmet like it. That is a weird helmet. Hmm. Anyway, light troops 
I mean, the unit models all look incredible in this mod, but we all know that by now. Clicked the wrong unit, dang it. Okay, you guys pull back out of that. Go back into skirmish mode. We didn't get a charge with these guys. Frightened horses? Camels frightened horses in this game? Weird. Okay, our front line's starting to get in position. Let's go ahead and put the archers on fire at will. Come on, get out of there, boys. Good. Okay. They are messing us about. Our general is under attack. Okay, hoplites, do your thing. You guys are on skirmish mode. What is this? Man, that drives me crazy in this game. Let's move these guys up to help out because I think we're actually not going to do well in this cab engagement. You guys can go ahead and fire at will again. You guys get up here. That's ah, camels. I was gonna say, hopefully we can get a good charge on them. Okay, let's start closing the gaps in. Okay, they do have some heavy cav. You guys are up against spears now, and we do not want that. You guys can go ahead and skirmish. See, this is one thing that's really, really cool about the desert units, is a lot of them are a hybrid of archers and spear units. Okay, let's go ahead and start charging. We do need to bring the infantry up here at some point. Okay, archers and general move up behind the front line. Jeez, I'm having a hard time selecting units today. Okay, I want to get the cavalry out now. Holy cow, they must have taken quite the charge there. The men are wavering. Yep. Okay, you guys turn around. Let's just go ahead and charge. I'm not gonna worry too much about hoplite wall or anything. Those guys should win pretty easily because they're just a really, really strong unit. Are you guys gonna, okay, I was gonna say, if they don't retreat, I'm gonna be really annoyed. We'll get these two to work together, hopefully keep each other alive. You guys come up here and help with that engagement. You guys keep running forward. You know what, we'll just let these guys fight out of phalanx for the entire battle and see how they go. We may actually lose that engagement. Take you off of skirmish mode. Maybe you can get a charge. Put you back on fire at will. That's quite the charge, you guys. I gave the order early enough, I thought. Okay, you guys I'm going to put into phalanx. The battle is turning in our favor. I need some more support down here. These guys are good, but they shouldn't win that. If we can actually catch their general unit, that would be awesome. Okay, our guys won pretty decisively up there, it looks like. It's one nice thing about having medium cav instead of light cav.
Okay, we did a little bit of damage to their general. Not much, but a little. Every little bit helps. Let's go get into the back of these medium spears. Let's just ignore the fact that we're going to get shot in the flanks for a little bit. Okay, archers start helping with this mass. Okay, their cavalry is going to be a nuisance. But if they're going to run into the center of our lines like that, we might be able to catch them. Archers, you can go ahead and stop, because I bet all you're going to do is friendly fire at this point. Okay, and that's a battle. Very, very poor army management on my part during that battle. The biggest problem, besides obviously the Cav Micro, was that I made the assumption they would charge me once I got in range with my archers, and they did not, so I ended up with my flanking infantry being left all by themselves. End of the day, we still won because our army is just way stronger. Let's go ahead and execute them to make Pergamon happy. We won't be able to chase them, and we won't quite be able to get back to our own region either, so that is unfortunate. We shouldn't be able to replenish from Pergamon's population either. Anyway, Pergamon can deal with that if they want. I really hope Dura doesn't randomly attack us and take Edessa, but if they do, it's not the end of the world. I guess none of these are hybrid units, because they all have zero ammunition. Okay, the first men are gearing up to attack Pergamon. Let's send Candy's Conquerors back around just to be within range to help hold our territory. Because I am still expecting these guys to declare war on me any day now. These guys would actually probably struggle pretty bad against these Persian armies. Because we just don't have the infantry corps here. Of course, that said, we might be able to kill them just with Skirmish Cav. Hopefully I don't have to use the spearmen. They're there as an emergency, not as an actual fighting force. It is good that we have a strong garrison here, but I still don't know if it would be strong enough to take a proper 20 stack of any nation on. Oh, population surplus. Let's make use of that immediately. Should be doing just fine on sanitation in this region. What do we even need here? Banditry is managed, public order is good. Just income? Just straight income? We're going to have more public order issues and food issues as we start to upgrade these to level 4. Obviously we don't have the research for that yet. But it is something to be cognizant of. See, these buildings just aren't terribly useful in my opinion. It does give us a little bit of a boost to our warrior class population. Since this is in Italy and this is actually a hotly contested area right now, I want to make sure I actually get the buildings right. Normally I wouldn't take nearly this much time looking at it. I think that the Agora just gives us the most options though. So let's build an Agora here. We cannot quite make it across.
but I, let me, I mean, I'm going to double check real quick, but I don't think there's going to be any major Carthaginian fleets. Okay, there is one, but they will not have the movement range to engage us in one turn. So let's get into the water and then come across. I have half a mind to move Grumpy's Guard up north. Okay, these guys can actually get ready to lay siege out here. I would like to get a little bit more replenishment on these guys. Especially the Heralds of Death, because they're my actual Carthage killers. I don't actually want to attack this army, because their artillery will actually be useful. What kind of garrison have they got here? I know it should be mostly dead. Nah, let's go ahead and fall back. I'd rather fight a field battle against this army. It probably won't happen, but in my perfect world, that's how it would work. We are trapped within their zone of control, so let's lay siege with Funky's Fieldmen. I mean, obviously, if we did attack it, we would decimate them. But I think I would rather just pull back and get some replenishment first. So let's keep siege so that we get rid of their zone of control. Pull those guys out, and then retreat here. I should probably have been more careful to make sure these guys had, or they were in range to be defended, but I don't think Carthage has the armies available to attack me right now. I may well send these guys up north. I might do it. Okay, Aravisi, you should be able to take on the Arverni here. If you can't, then you are an embarrassment. Let's go ahead and go for the money here for now while we're thinking about it. A little bit of food, a lot bit of money. Actually, no food. Well, no extra food, I mean. Their garrison over at Patavium isn't that strong. They've only got one army here, and now that... I am planning on taking this province. I'd rather not have Massilia go and take it from me. Did I actually get replenishment? I did. That's cool. Okay, neither of these armies are terribly important, so... Let's go ahead and take Medlon. We can afford to just continue the siege. Probably for an entire turn and build some siege equipment. But let's see what our odds look like if we just bring these guys up, because I kind of just want to auto-resolve this. Yep, yeah, let's auto-resolve that. Um, we'll go ahead and go with balanced, because I think that'll keep our cavalry alive. If you go aggressive, the AI likes to be really, really stupid about the cavalry. See, the cavalry still got pretty heavily damaged anyway. If I remember right, public orders is somewhere around negative 40 or so. And that's not... Honestly, for looting, that's not a ton of money. Let's go ahead and just raise it. Campaign movement range, and I guess formidable fighters. Again, I'm not terribly concerned about what these guys do. I am going to move this army back within range of Genua, just because I, at this point, I'm actually trying to hold that city. I'm just trying to look and see if I have any real options for replenishment should I need it.
I mean, a medium axe unit with 300 men, that's actually probably a pretty decent unit. Their stats don't look great, though. These guys appear to be actually quite good. Either that or they're just quite expensive. Okay, so we do have a little bit of options in terms of mercenaries. Let's go ahead and go with the muster field. Just because once this becomes a border province, we might start converting Roma to an economic center. Hmm. And get the campaign movement range and the formidable fighters again. Alright, make sure everyone's still deployed. Let me do a quick double check to see if I can get any more. Okay, so I'm still at max on my agents. The fleets are doing what they need to. The armies have all moved and are all leveled up. Income looks fine. Alright, let's check on loyalty now. I may even recruit a third fleet just so we can auto-resolve naval battles. Okay, loyalty looks good. Let's keep sending her on missions for another couple of turns. Cispolina would be the ideal place at this point, but since I just barely sent one there last turn, I obviously can't do it again. Well, let's send you to Mata, try and get Mata up over that 75 public order so they have the maximum bonuses. Did I just send the wrong one? Ah, uh, son of a... No, I did send the right one, that's what I meant to send. I was thinking to send her for loyalty, but I wanted to send her for this first. We should be slowly starting to lose influence, I think. Okay, but we are getting closer to being beloved in our nation, which will give us the maximum benefits from our politics. Um, we'll send you, I know you already have enough gravitas to get married, but we'll send you with a gift anyway. And then we'll have this guy do some more support gathering. Because now that I'm closer to having my fronts managed over here, I may actually convert to an empire even though I'm still at war with Carthage. I need to see how this situation develops first, but in any case, we'll go on to the next turn. My people are in danger. Can you not join with us and attack these dogs? I will speak the hardest word for a warrior. Peace.
Okay. So these guys have decided to go to war with me. We have a lot of wars to deal with now. So what I'm going to do here is go ahead and end my relations with this faction and as soon as possible just wipe them out. I think realistically I'm going to need more forces over here. So I'm going to start raising another army. Now, who should be the general? Wow, we are three generations into this family. Just starting, well, obviously this is the fourth generation. This campaign has felt a lot longer than that. <laughs> All right, let's see. You are 18, ready to get married, so let's get you married. and make you a general. First, let's see if any of this is terribly important to me. Yeah, I'm not in love with any of those bonuses. I think I've said that probably a hundred times by now, but they kind of suck for this faction. Wait, was that for sword units? Hmm. Okay, we will give your wife... I guess... Old man. Alright, whatever. Go ahead and give your wife some of these bonuses as well. And then Cetriporos, you will be our next general. We should have enough population in this province that we can afford to raise an army at least a decent army up here. We really don't have much population up here. I was hoping for more than that. But it will be enough for an army. There he is. Let's raise the army. All of these units are free. Let's go with the cavalry. I like to have cavalry generals. I will actually probably hire those guys. see if we have any good infantry alternatives out here. Georgian medium infantry, Georgian swordsmen. I definitely don't care about those guys because I don't like having light sword units. And then just a bunch of levies. Do we have any good archer units? Who are these Caucasian archers? So these guys actually have way better armor penetration. Their base morale is slightly worse, but that's not too big of a deal because pretty much all of the other important stats for a missile unit are the same. So let's actually hire some of these guys. We'll see how we go from there. And we can actually move through this province as well and continue recruiting higher tier units because we've built the advanced barracks here. 
So we actually have a ton of availability for high tier units out here. We just don't have a ton of population out here. Man, banditry is so bad in this province. Alright. Was that this turn? No, it was not. Okay, so let's pull you guys back over to here. Hopefully there's enough for you to replenish. You have maybe. Maybe, maybe not. Alright. Is there anything else important that needs to happen this turn? Probably not. Anything too important. Was this was that this turn that I did that, really? No? But these guys stayed at 8 supply. Anyway. Um, let's see. What have we got? Hopefully we have enough population here that we can replenish these two armies. Let's actually lay siege to Syracuse. And since they don't have an army there, we have really, really good odds of winning that. Let's put it even more in our favor, though. You guys hang out here and fortify. You guys can go ahead and patrol. You guys get the heck out of the water, but do I send you north or south? Holy mother of movement range. I mean, that seems like a ton of movement range. Let's send these guys up north. Maybe we can get a bit offensive up here and take Massalia. Okay, up here we have pushed back. Damn it. Damn you, Aravesi. We pushed back the Arverni. We have plenty of friends around here, no enemies, so let's just go back to... Actually, we'll send you guys back to replenish. Keep you guys here in a fortified stance. Ready for battle. Faster, damn you all. Now that we actually know we're going to hold this province, we can go ahead and start upgrading it. We're going to need more food here, so let's go with the food first. Alright, was that all of our military forces in the west? It looks like it was all of them everywhere. As far as the fleet... Let's actually just run on over here and see what happens. Make sure they stay within range to reinforce each other. Because the last thing I want to do is lose all the money I've put into these fleets without actually winning the fight. Alright, now, this battle, since it's so enormously in our favor, we're just going to go ahead and auto-resolve it right now, and then we'll end the episode. But, so begins our advance on Carthage in Sicily. And next turn, we will continue to push even farther into their territory. So, if you are enjoying this campaign at this point, then I'm glad, because we are nearly 40 episodes in. I'm going to start my Pergamon campaign very soon. Not exactly sure when. I don't want to have two campaigns active at the same time for uploading, just because I don't remember if I said this already or not, but I think it'll be a little bit more difficult to follow, and I, I don't like having to go back and forth between uploading two because it just makes the campaigns progress a bit funny. But if you guys are just dying to see me start the Pergamon campaign... Go ahead and let me know, and I can get that started sooner rather than later. 
I think I will still continue this one. If you guys are kind of done with this campaign at this point, then I'll I'll continue it, but I'll probably just continue it off camera. But if you guys want to keep seeing me play this campaign through, <clears throat> let me know and I will keep uploading it. And until the next episode, we will see you guys later.